very pleased that I was coming. And, well. And uh, he and Sarah both want me to, wanted me to greet you and send their fondest regards. Well, I, they, they're very close to my heart. I know they are. I know they are. And um, as, as I'm sure, um, I'm sure they told you that we're doing a book together on Jim's life, a biography, and of course, what happened to him on March 30th is a major part of it. Yes. So I thought um, that perhaps we could go through kind of quickly the um, beginning at the beginning when Jim joined your campaign. I realized that you were not focused on fairly junior staff people, I, but um, I, I recall that uh, John Connolly called Ed Meese and suggested Jim. Yeah. And. Uh, Oh my, he, he came aboard and he was, he was immediately uh, front and center and very much a part of the team. And uh, he had such, well, first of all, a great sense of humor, but he also had that, uh, that great gift of knowing whether to push on something or let it die, you know. That, 24-hour story that uh, you wanted to correct and uh, you found it was just better if you didn't say anything, it would go away. He, he had a great instinct for that. Oh, that's interesting. D did you, did you uh, spend any time with him? Did you, do you have an impression of him during those days? Uh, oh, Lord, yes. Oh, yes. We were all a tight little team in the front of the campaign plane. And what, uh, what did you, um, do you remember your first meeting with him or did it just sort of gradually come into focus? I, I can't say that I can actually pick it out in, the, in all that was going on there, but it was a case of when he came aboard, immediately met him and uh, he was in the inner circle from then on. And you, his humor was immediately apparent, was oh, he? Oh, yes. Was he yeah. irreverent at the beginning? Huh? <laughs> was he irreverent at no, the beginning? No, no, he, <laughs> no, it was always a, uh, good humor and uh, uh, and always fit the occasion. Uh, I'm, sh I'm sure you remember that it took some time to pick Jim as the right person to be press secretary, and uh, I just wondered if you recall what was going, what was the thinking. Uh, what sort of press secretary you were, what you had in mind, or... Um, well, if you're talking about press secretary in the, in my in present the job, yes. Yes. Pres I, yes, I'm always a little superstitious. I didn't get around to anything like that uh, in advance. I'm, you know, in baseball, I used to be a sports announcer, you know, in baseball, the pitcher is pitching a no-hitter. Uh, you never mention it in the dugout or anything. Uh, because if you do, you'll jinx him and then someone will get a hit. Well, I always kind of felt the same way about campaigning. I never, uh, I never made any decisions about what would happen later <laughs> until we knew <laughs> what I was going to be doing later. So we never talked about uh, uh, positions in the administration or anything at all. Oh, um, I see. Well, I, re I really meant, you know, th there was some talk that that uh, that Jim wasn't the, quite the right person for the job, and it was it took quite a while for him to be named, and he got a lot of kidding as a result. Oh. You remember? Uh, and, uh, well, because that would have been in the whole process then of of uh, after I was president elect, and and then the whole transition yes. period. Yes, that that is what. And I, what we had I, quite a team of people. Uh, working there and, and on all of those things, and uh, uh, when he was recommended for that position, uh, I didn't have to think twice. It just suddenly came clear that he was the yeah. right person. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, did Nofziger, was Nofziger ever in the running, or had he taken himself out of it? Uh, a long time ago, isn't it, to think yes, about those details? Yes. No, were, there were other things uh, for Lynn, not that. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
And then shortly after we were here, and after he'd been here for a while, why he chose to go, he wanted to go uh, out into the private mm -hmm. sector. But uh, no, I'm trying to think what it was we had in mind that he did, but. Uh, uh, let's see, was he in charge of political but, for a while? I th that was I it, so. yeah. Tell me, uh, tell me if you, if you wouldn't mind, uh, your view of the importance of the White House press secretary and how it fits into the scheme of things. Is it a... Oh, there's so much a part of your life, the, the whole press corps, that uh, it's, uh, it's very important. They're in, even if they're just out of sight, they're just down the <laughs> hall here, they're, they're an ever-present. Well, they're a presence all the time, and nothing is done without having to coordinate that and their activity. Um, and so the press secretary, no. Yes, is very much involved in everything that goes on. What, uh, what did you think of the job Jim was doing? Uh, he was doing great, yes. Um, the question of access is something that came up. Um, I mean, it comes up with every press secretary. It seems to be a very important thing. And uh, I just wonder, what, uh, did he have complete access or? Uh, yes. Yep. <laughs> well, if you don't mind, I'd kind of like to jump to uh, March 30th, 1981. I know that's an extremely right. painful um, subject <laughs> in more ways than one. Yes, definitely in more ways than one. And and with regard to him, I didn't, I didn't know until he, I myself was in the hospital and I discovered that I'd been shot because I didn't know I'd been shot. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, uh, they, when the shooting started, I thought it was firecrackers and I remember starting to say, what's, you know, what is that? And the Secret Service agent behind me just, grabbed me and the car door was open and just threw me and I dived into the car from his throwing me and then he and this is policy with them he l dived in on top of me and uh, then and it was only then that uh, sud I suddenly felt a very paralyzing pain and it was after he had jumped in so I thought something had happened that uh, I interpreted it as that he'd maybe broken a rib or something from the location of the pain. And I told him, and uh, he got off very quickly, and I sat up and he said, sit back. And I said, I can't, it hurts too much. And just then I coughed, and I had a handful of blood. And uh, so my prognosis then was that I'd broken a rib, but it had also pierced my lung. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, so he told the driver, we we'd started for the White House, he told him the hospital. And we started for the hospital and uh, I used up my handkerchief and then I used up his. Uh, and we got to the hospital, I got out and walked into the emergency room and a nurse met me and all of a sudden my knees began to wobble a little bit and I remember saying to her, I'm having trouble breathing. It seemed as if I had to breathe very deeply to and to get enough air, and the next thing I knew, I was on a gurney, and they were cutting my clothes off, and that's when they then discovered that I'd been shot. There'd been very little bleeding from it at all. Mm -hmm. he, but I didn't know about Jim, and no one brought me up to date on anything other than the fact that uh, I was gonna ask I'd you. shot, and mm -hmm. then uh, they wheeled a later, they wheeled a stretcher by me on the way to the uh, to surgery, and it was Jim, and they told me that it was him. And of course, at that time, uh, they were very pessimistic about... Uh, oh, the, the, you knew that before you went into surgery? I knew it before I went in, you yeah, did. because it, he'd gone by, and then, then they told me that, and so I was very much concerned, and that's when I then learned that uh, Tim McCarthy of the Secret Service had also taken a bullet intended for me. Who told you? Who gave you this news? 
Well, I'm trying to think now because, um, well, our, our White House doctor had gotten there and was there in attendance and... Uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Brugge. Yeah, and um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think, well, then the agents were with me and it was just through them, mm -hmm. I can't remember which one said specifically, but that I began to you, learn these when things. When you were lying in the emergency room, you were not aware that Jim was right next to you. He was. But no, I wasn't aware until, until the movement came around. Uh -huh. I didn't know that he was right there. You, well, I'm not surprised. <laughs> no. You had an oxygen mask on, yeah. I believe, and they were doing all kinds of things. As a matter of fact, I don't think I'd been told then. Maybe they thought that I shouldn't hear those other yeah, things. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that you were in no shape to hear such a thing. But I just wondered if you yourself looked over. No. You didn't. <clears throat> um, no, by that time they had me uh, on my back and they had a pipe down my throat. And, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, so I was, <clears throat> anything I wanted to say, I was writing notes. What... Uh, I, I think this seems an obvious question, but what was your reaction to hearing that Jim had Oh, I was, I did, I felt that somehow I was responsible for all that had happened to all the others that, you know. well, I'm sure, I know that Jim was right where he wanted to be. I, he, that was, he loved that job. He was thrilled to be doing it. Um, and he's, he's still, he hasn't plateaued. He's still making progress. He's, I, I, I know, we, we see them every once in I'm a while sure and, uh, and can see the, it's amazing. Uh, the progress. Yeah. It's amazing. I know that early on, right, uh, not too long after he, the shooting, things got to be kind of, uh, messy in the press office. <laughs> and uh, I know there was a, that it, there was a thought that perhaps, it was suggested that perhaps Jim should give up his title for a while so that things would be straightened out over there. And uh, uh, I know that, that just the barest suggestion was made to him. And I think this was about a month after the shooting. And Jim just reacted. Powerfully, I don't. Do you know about this? No. You don't. Well, uh, he, uh, he he just he he knew immediately that they were asking him to give up his job, or you know they were just going to discuss it a little bit. Nobody had told that said that to me because he's got that job as long as I'm here. <laughs> well, uh, I, I, it, I thought it was amazing that he reacted that strongly, well. just you know, with that much brain injury. But you, you weren't aware of those? No. That uh, discussion? But, uh, but he's got that job? Yes. What do you think, uh, what do you think, how do you, do you think things would have been different if Jim had been here? Or, uh, or, and how do you think he would have? Well, I hesitate to. <laughs> I realize to say about uh, anyone Without else, but he's, uh, and I've always, you know, his presence is, is there, and and uh, and so I feel that, uh, in part, that's why uh, things are working well. Mm -hmm. well. That's true. It is his staff that's in there, yeah. isn't it? That is true. You, do you, do you, uh, you see Jim from time to time? Yes. In fact, where? Oh, the other day, I saw him out here for, for Mike Deaver's going away party. Mm-hmm. And do you, do you get regular reports from doctors? Do you get a cover of overall oh, we, review every now and then? Uh, well, there has been uh, just the now and then the just what you said, the progress and so forth, and good news to report. That, uh, but we see them enough, and Nancy talks to Sarah. And 
Do you, do you have any uh, uh, anecdotes or images or little memories of or even any, what do you think of when you think of Jim Brady? Well, <laughs> I don't need to, it's a kind of a montage of memories. I can't mm -hmm. pick out some specific uh, incident or anything except that I can visualize him there in the campaign plane and as I say, those discussions when something broke that uh, uh, you had to discuss, uh, you know, how do we deal with this or something and he was a he was a great voice of reason uh, hmm. on how to handle it, and we, and we all, uh, we all turned to him for his analysis of uh, what should be the procedure, and of course the humor. He and uh, he becoming uh, Nancy's Y and H, uh, or is she what? Yes. You know about I that. I know about <laughs> that. Yeah, that's very true. Yes. Yes, because there were stories circulating. There were some, somehow it got out that Mrs. Reagan wanted, what I remember is, a reasonably good-looking press secretary. Yes, it, and it wasn't true at all. And, uh, it was never and, and, that, and they'd said in the rumors, they said that she wants someone young and handsome. So when she went, she finally heard this rumor, why then she started calling him her, her Y&H. <laughs> well, she and still I, does. Yes, that's that's cute. Well, um, she, I, I did, I talked to her. I'm sure, I mean, perhaps she told you. I interviewed her earlier, yeah. and she denied vehemently that she had ever said oh. anything. I'm such a thing. And she, but it, you know, it, some of the times those things have a life of their own. And, I don't know where some of them, they're, they're so strange, that one for example, out of totally whole cloth. You know, lots of times you can find something where it was a misunderstanding or someone overheard only part of a sentence or something, but not this. Just like just recently, we discovered that there was a rumor running rampant, <laughs> get this one, <laughs> doesn't have nothing to do with Jim, that up at Camp David, I slugged Lucky, our dog, and knocked her unconscious. Oh, really? <laughs> and I, I should hear that one. Good and I said, where and how could that be? <laughs> and and uh, it died a morning because it was, obviously there was nothing. I'd never gotten mad at Lucky. I'd, That's a strange one, all right. Yes. Training her a little bit and the housebreaking and so forth. I've had a rolled up newspaper and now and then paddled her <laughs> rear end, which you're supposed to do with it, with a newspaper. You have to. But uh, it was the most far-fetched thing I'd ever heard, so I guess that's why we haven't heard any more about it, but it uh, died a morning. I don't think anybody would believe that one at all, at all. I, I wanted to ask you about the, if you have, the Hinckley's have just come out with a book, the, the oh. uh, John Hinckley's parents. I, I saw his mother in the air the other day, and I, I thought I heard him say something about a book. Well, they had, had a big spread in the Washington Post, and uh, uh, I'm not sure why. But uh, in fact, the, the one thing Jim Brady said to me, he said, we, we, meaning he and I, had better have as big a spread in the Washington Post as, as the Hinckley's did. <laughs> but I just wondered, uh, one thing I, that was in that interview with Mrs. Hinckley said, that she didn't want people to regard this incident as as an evil act, but as a what is your what are your views on that? Are you, have you? Oh, well, from all of the story and the the things that have have come out about uh, his infatuation and and all of that, it uh, it, it certainly was the. Uh, It wasn't an, an, an act based on, let's say, uh, well, like a terrorist act or a resentment of me or what I was doing or anything. It was, uh, he was looking for publicity and so forth, to, uh, born of that infatuation. And I, uh, mm -hmm. all I know is that when I asked for a little help for myself in recovery, uh, I asked for it also for the fellow that had done it, that he could get well too. That's pretty, pretty forgiving, huh? 
I must say. Tell me, uh, you, you saw Jim before you left the hospital. I think you looked down in yes. on him. Do you recall that? Yes, I do. <clears throat> Went to see him. Did he sp well, speak to you? What did he say to you? Do you remember? Well, I know he, at that time, was still having difficulty uh, talking. Mm -hmm. So it was um, more, you know, encouraging him and telling him to I get well and come back quick. And yeah. What did, how did, he must have been pretty, in pretty bad shape at that point. Yes, yes, he was. And uh, no one was giving any. Uh, Were you surprised? Uh, no, because I'd, I'd kept up in the hospital mm -hmm. with asking how he was coming since they had told me. I mean, was by, by his, taken aback by his looks or? Uh, no, Dr. Ruge had kind of prepared me that. There'd be a, a time period there that mm -hmm. would have to go by. Mm -hmm. um, now, one little, I've talked to Jerry Parr, the Secret Service agent who yeah. threw you the into one the that car. Threw me in. yeah. And he says that you did not say, <laughs> as Lou Cannon has in his book, you did not use, you did not say, I hesitate to say this to you, uh, get off me, you son of a bitch. <laughs> He said, you did not say that. So, I didn't. Well, he said, and you never talk that way to Good people Lord, around no. you. <laughs> well, I just I wanted to get it from you. <laughs> no, and it was, uh, and no, and I had no resentment at all. I knew why he had dived on me mm -hmm. and what he'd done. And, uh, and as I say, and, and it was then after that that suddenly I felt this pain. And no, I, I, uh, I said, I, uh, I think I've broken a rib. And uh, did you, you knew why he had done it? Be, uh, did you know immediately that there? Did you and he talk about the fact that there had been gunshots as you were going down Connecticut Avenue? Uh, or was it just an assumption? Oh, I no, I, you, I. In fact, I got a glimpse of him as I was thrown. Did you really? Yeah, uh, he was so close. He was right there between the cameraman and the front line of the press corps. You got a glimpse of him shooting? Yes. Okay, and uh, then knew that then saw everybody running and everything but and it was right then he just and the fact is that the bullet that hit me caromed off the car mm -hmm. and came through the little gap between the door and the and the car and it was about uh, i've seen it and it was a well, it was like a coin it was flattened out and had black paint on it from the car and um, so it hit me evidently on the way in when I was diving in, mm -hmm. and then the car pulled out very fast, and then I, he'd gotten off, and he started to tell me he was sorry, and I. But you uh, actually caught a glimpse of this man. Yes. Oh, for heaven's yeah. sake! Isn't that interesting? And I. So there was no was, question as to. No. I mean, you didn't need to yeah. talk in the car. Well. Uh, well in, in, no. About no, what had right, happened. That's right, and we didn't we didn't have any knowledge of what was happening to anyone else, so. We went there. And, mm -hmm. uh, Jerry told me that that you began to pick up speed, and you probably hit 50 or 60 miles an hour. Yes. Do you remember that? When, when the blood, yeah, it started because uh -huh. at first, when when I said this pain and that I thought it, that, you know, broken a rib when he uh, jumped on me, away, he said, "Well, I think we better go to the White House, though, don't you?" And I said, "Yeah." And uh, then came the coughing and the blood, and uh, and I. My first reaction was, okay, if you've heard of that happening, a broken rib pierced the lung, and that's why I'm bleeding. And he just turned to the driver and said, George Washington Hospital, and, and uh, we sat there, and I, uh, Wait, two or three times I complained about that it seemed that I was having to, and that panicked me a little. Mm -hmm. uh, when you have a feeling that you're getting less and less air, you think, what do I do if one of these times I take that <laughs> and it doesn't end, no air comes in. But, mm -hmm. uh, uh, what, was it, how, the pain was pretty terrific? Yes, and I, I have a hunch that was from the bone. You see, it hit a rib, that's what flattened, well, the car flattened it out, but it hit a rib, and they say that that happens, that that's a kind of a paralyzing pain, and then it tumbled 
down through the lung, and they found it about an inch from my heart. <laughs> I've been going over all the literature <laughs> and, and uh, uh, that fascinating article that was done on it and so forth. And, and I will be writing about that to a certain extent. I'm glad to have your f yeah. first person. <laughs> Did anyone fill you in, though, on the all the little series of miracles that happen and how much worse it could be? For example, the staff meeting at the hospital? No. And, well, all the doctors had just were just concluding a staff meeting. They were all there. Uh, every level of surgery and doctor connected with the hospital. Otherwise, there could have been that gap of having to send for a doctor and so forth. But when the word was brought to them, uh, <laughs> I had quite a surgical staff. It was a big crowd <laughs> when they came in. That was when I said, I hope that they were all Republicans. Yes. <laughs> yeah, there are a number of wonderful quotes before surgery and after, and which I plan to sprinkle through <laughs> the book. I, I assume those are all accurate. Well, <laughs> all those wonderful. that crowd standing around, somebody ought to <laughs> right. entertain them some way. <laughs> <laughs> See, I just realized I have not asked you what your reaction, just going back a little bit, uh, what was your reaction to the Killer Trees incident? Jim Brady's, remember he, ran down the aisle of the press plane, pointing out the window at a burning forest fire, <laughs> yelling killer trees, killer oh, trees, well, got him into some hot water. Oh, well, but this was, uh, well, that was, and I thought it was funny, this was after uh, I had cited this very eminent uh, scientist from, uh, I think it was Texas A&M, who was cited with all the furor about air pollution and so forth, uh, he gave the facts and figures on how much of it was pure nature. That if you could wipe out all the man-made sulfur dioxide in the air, you'd still have over a third as much as we presently have that is just coming daily from, from nature. And uh, then I remember the other one, the fact that um, that haze over the Blue Ridge Mountains, mm -hmm. they talk about. That haze is what is known in smog as which, uh, oxides of nitrogen and that the trees emit it. And so it was one day in a, when the press was after us on a, things of that kind, I, I cited the, the need to, be, to have some common sense about environmental problems and not get, go off in a panic about everything and cited some of these things. Well, some of the press started in on me that, uh, you know, I had called the trees killers, the killer trees and so forth. <laughs> so Jim was just uh, responding to them and their, <laughs> their charge. Did you think it was funny at the time? <laughs> yeah, I didn't think anything about it. That, why did some of, some of our people... Uh, well, he was taken off the plane for a week. <laughs> Good and Lord. Mike Deaver put him back on. I, I know that oh, for... For heaven's sakes. Well, he was very quiet about it. He didn't, he wasn't very <laughs> proud of it, I can tell well, you that. Well, some things like that, I guess they just never bothered telling me, and I, <laughs> I never paid attention to when staff, sure you, you know, things. moved or something between stops. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just take a quick look here. I to think of it. I wish I'd known about that. I think that's pretty funny. <laughs> Burning the killer trees. <laughs> Well, I, um, I understand you mentioned uh, your movie, Hellcats of the Navy, yesterday when you were at yes. Annapolis. And I just want you to know that I saw it, and I thought it was terrific. Well, thank that you. That and a lot of other of your movies. I, mm. I, I, there was a retrospective when you first took office, and I made a point of watching well. all of them <laughs> every day, well. and I thought they were all terrific. Well, thank you. I, uh, I was mad at the studio for the title because that, it was from a book written by the admiral, the, uh, which, oh, well, one of the top admirals in the Pacific War. And the book was Operation Hellcat. Hmm. And that was all based on a true incident, that in the war, the Japan was existing totally on the ship traffic across the Sea of Japan from the mainland for supplies and so forth that they must have. 
And the Navy organized Operation Hellcat, in which a whole group of submarines at a given moment went in, went through the submarine nets into the Sea of Japan to designated spots, sank to the bottom, and laid there and waited, and then, at the moment of the heaviest traffic of ships and everything, at a given moment, every one of them came to the surface and between them literally wiped out the Japanese merchant marine hmm. in that one operation. And Operation Hellcat sounded to me kind of like wars and so forth, and I kept remembering that the Navy in the old days used to have a, an airplane called the Hellcat. And so to call it the picture Hellcats of the Navy, uh, I, I, I didn't understand your objection. Yeah, the other one, Operation Hellcat mm -hmm. would have a little, you'd be a little curious about that. Mm -hmm. and the other one sounded like, well, are we Hellcats on shore leave or what do they mean? Yes. Yeah. In doing the scene, <laughs> and all of a sudden, she was actually crying, for real. <laughs> you know, us saying goodbye, and as she realized what she was doing, then she, she started to laugh. She was crying and laughing and crying. Like we, we had to say cut <laughs> and start over again after she got hold of herself. Watch it again sometime and look for that scene. Well, that's funny. She was good. She was really yes. good. I was impressed. Yes. She, she, had, at Metro, she didn't have much time uh, before we got married to, to do many pictures over there, but those that she did I thought were darn good. Mm -hmm. She did one with uh, Ray Milland in which he, they were both uh, uh, employed at a university. And his wife and child, there was an explosion in their home and they were killed. And he started going a direction that was towards suicide. Mm -hmm. And uh, Nancy saw this, was a, had been a friend, but she was also uh, engaged to someone else. And then, of course, the, he couldn't quite understand but her concern was, and then as it developed, as the picture came on, it was finally a great scene where she stopped Ray Milan from, he'd actually reached the point from suicide. And then you learned why she could see this. She had come to that same point herself once in her life. Hmm. And she saw all the signs in him. Do you remember the name of that movie? Uh, oh, wait a minute. Night into Morning. N Night of? Night unto Morning. Night unto Morning. Hmm. I have to have a retrospective of her film sometime. Well, I, I see. Got him well? I think I do. I think I do. And I certainly, certainly appreciate this. And uh, oh. I'll try to do a good job on the book. So well, I'm sure you will. We'll do All my right. best. And it's well, a great sure. project. Wonderful opportunity for me. Uh, it's been a wonderful thing to know Jim and Sarah. Well. And to meet every, all of you, yeah. especially you, right. Mr. President. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so I get unwired. Huh? Mm -hmm. All right. Great. Nice to see you. Yeah, great pleasure.